Today, we're diving into the world of Python with two powerful libraries, NumPy and Matplotlib. Imagine you have a small set of numbers called vector like x is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And we want to take a square of each element of this vector. We will have to individually take a square of each element. Pretty easy to work with, right? But what if you had 1,000 numbers? Typing all these numbers one by one and taking square of each value individually will be a nightmare. That's where Python developers have introduced a library named NumPy. This library does all the heavy lifting and tedious job of managing set of data in the form of arrays and vectors. Moreover, it helps in taking mathematical operations on each element of array with a single command of code. And with Matplot Library, we can even visualize these arrays and vectors for better data analysis. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to use these libraries work with a cool example. Let's jump in. Imagine you're working for a company that manufactures soap bubbles of various sizes, and you need to understand how the surface area and volume of the bubbles change as their size increases. You've been tasked with analyzing bubbles with radii ranging from tiny 0.1 cm to large 100 cm. Calculating the surface area and volume manually for hundreds of different bubble sizes would be extremely time consuming. The challenge is to efficiently generate a range of radii and calculate the corresponding surface areas and volumes to understand how these properties scale as the bubbles grow. Additionally, you need to visualize these changes to determine whether the surface area and volume grow at the same rate. Using Python's NumPy and Matplotlib libraries, we'll automate these calculations and create plots that reveal the patterns in the relationships between the bubble size, surface area, and volume. This analysis can help optimize the amount of soap used for bubbles of different sizes, leading to cost savings and better product design. Now, let's jump to the coding using Python on Google Colab. I prefer using Google Colab because there is no installation required and we can use pre-installed libraries. You can use it simply on any of your browsers. We will start by importing the libraries into the Python environment using import command. We are importing two libraries, NumPy for numerical operations and matplotlib for plotting graphs. NumPy is imported as NP as a short form and we will use NP to use all the methods of this library. Similarly, matplotlib is imported as plt. We will use all methods of this library using plt as short form. In order to generate a vector of values from 0.1 to 100, we will use NumPy method. We will generate a vector r ranging from 0.1 to 100 with a step size of 0.01. This is done using NumPy method named a range that whose first argument is starting value, second argument is ending value, and third argument is step size. Now, Imagine if you want to generate a vector from 1 to 1000 with a step size of 5, what will be the Python command for that? Think about it and leave a comment. Since we have already created a vector of radius named r, we can use the formula for the volume of a sphere. v is equal to 4 by 3, pai, r cube, and calculate the volume for each value of r. Notice here, we have used np.py instead of manually putting the value of pi. Moreover, we can simply use double asterisk to take power of the vector r. This is how NumPy library makes it easier for us to compute volumes for all values of radius ranging from 0.1 to 100. Similarly, we can generate a vector of surface area values using np.py command to get value of pi and a double asterisk to take square of each value of radius. Isn't it simple? Now, since we have the vectors prepared, we will use matplotlib to plot and visualize the changes in volume and surface area of sphere with radius. Create a new figure plot for the window. Please notice plt is used as short from to utilize figure method of matplot library. Subplot command splits the single figure into number of sections. The first argument is two, which means there will be two rows. Second argument is one which means there will be one column, and third argument is one, which means first section is active for plotting. What if we want to create a subplot with four rows and two columns and select second section of figure? Comment the command if you understood subplot. Log log command converts the horizontal as well as vertical axis of the figure to logarithmic scale. 
Radius will be shown on the horizontal axis and vertical axis will represent volume of the sphere for each value of radius. Setting grid as true will show grid lines for better visuals. Setting labels makes it easy for viewers to know what do horizontal axis represent. In our case, it represents radius. We create a logarithmic plot of V against R to visualize the relationship between volume and radius. Now we will plot the surface R in the next section of the subplot figure. Subplot 212 will select the second section of the figure that is split into two rows and one column. The log log plot of radius versus surface area is plotted with the line width of 2. Again setting the grid to true in order to make the grid lines visible on the graph. Setting the label for the horizontal axis. Similarly we plot surface area A against radius R. Let's run the code to see resulted graph. Graphs display the relationships between radius, R, volume, V, and surface area, A, on a log-log scale. It is noticeable that the radius vector was generated from 0 0.1 to 100 and volume as well as surface area of soap bubbles was calculated easily using NumPy library. This was done using simple NumPy commands to make the laborious job much easier. Volume versus radius shows a steep increase, following the cubic law, whereas surface area versus radius increases more gradually, following the quadratic law. Both plots appear as straight lines, highlighting power law behavior. Volume of soap bubbles grows faster than surface area as radius increases. Thus, it is clear that NumPy and Matplot libraries can make exhaustive calculations and visualization easier for the programmers. This tutorial showed how can we use NumPy and Matplot libraries in Python to make our lives easier for computational problems. We have more interesting micro tutorials for Python, MATLAB, and other programming languages. Please like, comment, and subscribe the channel to encourage our team. Comment for improvements. Your feedback is important.